I was just sort of at my wit's end, didn't know what to do. I knew that I was working full time, my husband was full time, but we needed some assistance. You can be a loving caregiver, I think, even better when you have some help. They're wonderful. They're more than what words can say. I'm really uh, uh, thankful that I have them. I wouldn't want nobody else since I have them. I feel like a, an angel came and you know took my place. It's not a job. I come here and I have fun every single day. Christmas Eve, my mom became deathly ill and was put in the hospital. And just a couple weeks after that, my dad had a fall. And there was a family that was in the, in the bed next to my mom and they had just such a huge family that they were around the clock in the room with their mother and I thought well that's a great thing and I thought well I've got first light and this sounds crazy but they were my family they were the ones that sat with my mom when I couldn't be there and they took care of her and watched her and spoke with her and reassured her when she woke up give me a squeeze okay Mwah. okay love you A typical day starts off with me coming in and telling her about my day <laughs> um, and just getting her up, getting her ready to take a shower, getting her cleaned up. They give me a shower twice a week when they're here. It's really great because of my husband was having a real hard time getting me in the shower and getting me out. Now he doesn't have to worry about it. And it takes a little of him. It's fun. I enjoy my caregivers a lot. We go swimming and we have a really good time. And then, uh, we get out and we like to eat a lot, and uh, it's just fun. As the months went by, she developed some memory issues, and so it became quite apparent to us that she needed a little bit of assistance. The last thing I ever wanted to do was to have to put her in a home. It was an enormous relief to know that someone was there for my mom. Um, you can imagine how lonely it is once you lose a spouse and your, your daughter is off at work all day, you have no grandchildren around, you have nobody. I don't have no family whatsoever. They all passed away. Uh, I had to put my dog to sleep too. This is exciting. Yeah. All the church of men looking so excited for you. Then sings my soul, my silver God to thee. I enjoy very much. I'm looking forward to every Sunday coming to pick up Charlie and we go to church together. I feel uh, comfortable because she enjoys the church service and uh, I feel confidence with her. I went down one day to see Jim. And I thought, oh dear, that is dangerous to be there alone. I'm wondering how does he manage by himself down there when he's kind of deteriorating and all that. I was just 
Parker horrified to think that he was there by himself. And so I said, we have to do something. And she said, well, when do I start? I said, well, you can start in the morning. I couldn't sleep that night thinking, you know, they ride, he can get hurt. But then at the same time, I was feeling relieved because the next day, Renee was gonna be there for him. Renee is wonderful. She's smart and she tries to work with me to uh, get done what we need to get done. And I like her a lot. She's a very pleasant person. The head of the Department of Neurology told us, just looked at us straight in the face and said, okay, you need to go home, you need to quit your job, you need to give up your car and your driver's license. And we were in shock. That day was a pretty traumatic day. My, I had very, my very best friend there with me and John. And we met in Jacksonville, spent the night there and cried all night. spoke with Karen, I liked her immediately. And uh, also she came right over that, I think the very next day. By the time that visit was over, I had a plan. And uh, she was there to implement that plan. Karen's available, and I hate to say this, but 24 seven, if I call her or text her at any time, she responds. And that's a sense of security that I've never had with any other agency. <laughs> they really picked some I wonderful know. nurses, especially in my. We don't have a serious family. <laughs> she's really a part of the family. And I would highly recommend first lady. I wouldn't trade it for anybody because I really care for them and I know that they care for me. I know that uh, I really appreciate what they do, and I'm thankful that I have them. They've become friends of hers and friends of our family. Jose, is, he's like a friend or a buddy or something either. Just We just go out together and we talk about things and, and that's, that's, it, that's it. Tara seems to read us. <laughs> she knows our moods and we feel like doing or don't, and she's not pushy. And I get Joe up first, and depending on the day, we'll just get him in the shower and um, get dressed, get ready, we'll come out here. I have his breakfast ready for him, I'll make some coffee, and then he'll start eating. And then by nine o'clock is when Midge likes to get up. She's just worked herself in like she's part of the family. <laughs> and uh, I never had that. We really care about our client, and that's the relationship that we're looking for. And me and Charlie have a really good relationship, so we enjoy the company of each other. I'm just very grateful for First Light and for the peace that they've given our family and the joy that they've given to my mom. She has a smile on her face all the time when there's a caregiver there. Not just that they have great training, but they have compassion, they have a heart. You don't get that with every agency.